Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? I'm doing great. This is the next video in the class series, kind of mini series, and we're talking about classes and how they work. So just a quick recap from the last video, uh, we created a class, a basic structure of a class. This is the basic syntax of a class, and we created some class variables, some member variables. Um, and then constructors and destructors. I talked about that in the previous video. If you haven't watched that, please go and do that. Then at the end, we create uh, two person objects and we just make sure just simply to check which constructor, which destructor was used and all that stuff. So, so we haven't really used these objects yet. Now, let me just get into that. So the reason we couldn't really print any of this out is because uh, I didn't create accessors and modifiers. Now, today I thought I'd talk about that and in the next video I'll talk about functions. I realized that I should have probably split up the last video into a few parts as well because it was kind of long, or at least into two parts, but nevertheless I'll split it up a little more now so you don't have to watch a 30 minute video. Um, anywho, so we have our two objects, uh, one with a bunch of data and one with a bunch of default data in it. And uh, what we're gonna do just to get started is I'm just gonna make these a little smaller so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to create a few accessors and modifiers. Now, to create an accessor, what its main purpose is, is to grab this from the object. Each object has its own name, its own uh, age, and all that stuff. It, 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 each object is, it has a copy of its own variables and stuff like that. So depending on the object I call this function from, the accessor from, it will return that object's uh, variable. So if I want to get name from P P1, I would write std cout p1 dot get name, and then this isn't going to work right now, but I'm going to make a copy out of this, and I'm instead of P1, I'm going to do P2 dot get name. So P1 and P2, we have two objects here uh, that I showed you, two objects, P1 and P2. So depending on which one I'm using, I'll get that object's variable. Again, because both objects have their own copies of all this. Remember, this class is the blueprint, and the object is what is built out of the blueprint. So each of them have their own copies. Anyway, let's get started. So the accessor, what do we need to return? The first thing you need to check, what are we accessing? So I'm going to make an accessor for the uh, name variable. So obviously it's a string. So I'm going to return a string. String. So that's the first, first point. Next is going to be, well, what should this uh, function's name be? It's just sort of like a regular function. It's just called an accessor because its only job is to access this variable. I can do a bunch of other stuff in here. I'm not forbidden to. It's just that this is kind of a, just a, a, a naming of this type of function. So don't freak out too much. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a very simple and straightforward name. I'm gonna get something from the class and it's gonna be the name variable and it's just going to be empty. So get name empty. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a const after this and I'm going to make this a const reference. Okay. And I'm also going to make this in line. So there's a bunch of things happening here which you might be really confused about. So let me just go ahead and explain this. Now in line is I'm not 100% sure anyone who's much better at this than me will understand it. But for me, what inline is, what I've been taught is that it it reads the function's code differently. So it will read it in a line. So you want to keep it like this and it will just, uh, it's, it's better to define it in here. If you're defining your functions in here, in the class itself, because you can define them outside like we did with the regular functions, and then then you don't use inline, I think. I think it's something like that. I'll check up on it and I'll, I'll give you a better explanation to it. But at least in this case, it's okay. Const means that we're returning this string. We're returning a constant string reference. And this we talked about in the previous videos. Um, it's just returning it as a constant reference. So there's nothing special about it. Instead of making a copy of the string, we're returning it as a constant reference. So that's okay. And that's good to do with bigger objects and things in the future. Um, so that's good. This const after the function, after the final parentheses, tells us that this function is not going to change any of these variables. It's not going to change anything. So the computer knows that this is only going to use it in some way. It's not going to change any any data. So that, that helps the computer know that and it 
kind of bo- kind of helps it out in uh, in its uh, its overhead basically less overhead, meaning it works less. So that's good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a return because we're gonna return a string, and I'm gonna return this name. So that's all this function does. It returns this private variable name through a pipeline type thing, like a public, because this is under public. So it's kind of a cheat way of getting this private variable. Now you're like, why don't you just have name and everything in public? Again, it's a security thing. You can do that. You can do that. No problems like that. But this just helps us in when we make sure that you get this variable, it's a constant string. It can't be changed. You can't modify it through this function. It's a little more secure to get your variables through a accessor like this than to just directly access them because otherwise I could do like p1 dot name equals something something and it will just you know there's no security there there's no control so this gives you a little more control of what you're doing and then we're gonna create a modifier for this as well so I'm just gonna copy paste the whole function so an accessor gets something it's not gonna change it a modifier changes it so it's gonna be an inline void because we're not returning anything. We're gonna get something in here and we're gonna change one of these, in our case, the name variable, through something that comes into the parameter list. And then this can't be const either because we're changing something. And all this is gonna do is it's gonna do this name equals name. And we're gonna send in a const std string in here. Name, that's it. That's all we're gonna do. All right, and it can be dangerous uh, sending stuff in here if they get deleted later but I'll still keep it as reference it shouldn't it shouldn't damage anything as I had a comment before that you can get like dangling pointers and stuff like that we'll talk about that later but this should be fine for now some objects can complain doing this then you can just pass them in by value like that but uh, for now we'll just do this so it's an inline void set name so I'm just gonna change the name here instead of get name I'm gonna do set name because that's the, what this function is supposed to do takes this parameter and puts it into our name variable now if I run this um, I'm just gonna do one thing I'm going to well never mind, never mind never mind let's just run this so what we do get is some errors uh, let's see mm, so what's our what's our problem here um, Let's see. Oh, sorry. I forgot to kind of just uh, comment this out. There we go. So if I run this now, we should be fine. There you go. So I got search and I got none. And that's exactly what we wanted. So I got my name, P1, and P2. Now if I, below this, I say P1.set name. So for some reason, I want to change my name. And I'm going to call myself Daniel now okay just like that and then I do the C out p1 get name again you'll see that we'll get the new name because I changed the my own name I changed the name in the object to Daniel see that so that's how these set and get methods work now just to uh, fix everything just to uh, or complete everything I'm gonna just uh, create all of these so I'm gonna make an uh, make one of these or two of these functions for each of these variables basically is what I'm trying to say so get age would be the next step like this and then we would return this age then we're gonna get a boolean boolean and we're gonna return this uh, female because we want to check get male I can just say get female just like that I don't even that <laughs> sounds fun get female easy function no problems address profession uh, string get address like that get profession profession and then get std now that sounds funny as well but yeah there you go no problems that's a great function um, really really good to have and then now we have 
Um, oh, this is a boolean, by the way. Bool. So now we have accessors for every one of our things. Now you're like, ah, shit, what if I have a thousand of these? Well, I'm sorry, dude, you're going to have to create a thousand of these as well. Uh, if, if you want to return all of those. So at the end of the video, I'm just going to show you a way to uh, make a nice little function, which is going to be an std string. Const std string. It's not going to be a reference now because we are returning. We're going to return something that uh, can be deleted. So it's going to be deleted before, after the return. So we don't want to return it as a reference. Anyway, const string to string is what this is called. Const. And we're going to create this function in here just in a minute. So set name, um, set age, const uh, int reference age, this age equals age, and so on and so on. So I, I guess you, I guess you get the whole, get the whole point of all of this. I don't think I have to do all of these. Just waste your time. Just go ahead and create these for all of your variable so let's just get to two string anyway uh, create a std string here called um, final string or something like that and uh, make it empty now final string is going to be this name so this is going to be a little tedious as well name so what the point of this function is, is to take all your variables and return them as a nice string. So you can print out your uh, your person um, in any way you want. So I'm just going to make a nice little string here, plus, so you can add strings together like this. Now name is already a string. If if you want to add age, then you're going to have to use std to string. Don't use this if you're doing stuff in real time and you need performance because to string is kind of slow. But for this reason, it's okay. H plus, and I'm just going to copy this to make it a little faster. Um, then we have, I'm going to remove these for now. Then we have female address profession STD. Uh, STD to string this female. And notice I'm not doing get in here as well in this function because I'm in the class. I'm in a class function, so I don't need to use get name or set name and stuff like that. I can access these directly. It's only outside of the class that I can't do that, just so you know. And um, so I'm just going to make this a little prettier like this. And then let's see this add address. Whoops. Uh, this profession, this STD new line. So, and then I'm going to do a STD to string in front of this. And we're done soon. All this work is really tedious. So you're going to have to get used to this. I'm sorry about that, but you will. Let me add a few of these in front of this. There we go. So this is the name, this is the age, this is the female, male, uh, I guess, um, address, profession, and STD, like that. And then we have a two string function. So what we're going to do at the end of this is we're just going to do a return um, final string. So this will return this whole string with this beautifully formatted um, text and we can print it out. So for example, I'll do a std cout p1 dot string and I'll do a new line there and we'll just run this. And here's the two string. So name Daniel, age 28, female zero, female male zero. So that means I'm a female address somewhere, profession, YouTube, whatever, whatever, professional person, STD. No, nope, nope, nope. So there you go. That's a few functions and a few accessors and modifiers. Don't forget to create these 
for your other ones as well. It could be really good to use. Uh, I showed you an example of both of them. So please try and play around with this. Try to make some more cool classes and stuff like that. And uh, you should have a lot of fun with this. Mm, yeah. So yeah, thanks for watching in this video. I know these uh, videos are a little tedious, but I'll try to make them quick and nice. So in the next video, we'll probably talk a little bit more about the class as well. Um, and putting classes in classes and all that stuff. And a few cool tricks you can do to uh, make your life a little easier. And I'll try to show you how to define these functions outside of the class as well. So thank you for now. Take care. Best of luck. And I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.